Hello, welcome back to our narrowboat pipistrelle. Today I would like to quickly go over the exterior changes of the boat and show you around the engine bay. When Sea Otter made their boats, they made the handrails, the sides of the boat and the gunnels all the same colour. Because this boat is 15 years old and once I took the name off the side here, you could see where the sun had weathered it, there was a few scratches from people stepping over, so I thought I would go a little bit more traditional. So let me show you the paints and what I used. Right, <coughs> so the, the gunnels are now painted black and I phoned Aintree Beetles to be honest and said I really like the finish what do you use and they pointed me to the direction of HMG C71 Speedline it is a 1k synthetic enamel I masked up where I needed to I used a scotch bright pad to roughen the surface and two coats of C71 and it looks more traditional now. I didn't like it all being the same colour even if it was good condition I wanted uh, to be a little bit different. So the the little button on the front of the boat and also the handrails they was all blue I didn't like that either I wanted a bit more colour so for that I used international pre-coat in white so I masked up I used a scotch bright pad, the same as the gunnels. I roughened the surface. One coat of pre-coat in the morning. By late afternoon, I had used one coat of Rochelle Red, top black 011. And the next morning, I let that cure and set. And late morning, I'd done a second coat. Two coats of this, I think, is more than enough. Over time, you could probably add more coats and build it up but uh, initially two coats was fine. To touch up some of the paints on the rest of the boat, I managed to get a color match done from Paint Man, and that is a Royal Blue, BS 106 Royal Blue. I did look at the original paperwork from when the boat was new 15 years ago, and it was called Midnight Blue. I bought some Midnight Blue, it was nothing like it at all. So the names, weirdly, the names changed. Um, even the, the code wasn't the same. So, but that's correct now. So all I've used that for at the moment is the gas locker lid. And I think I might have done a couple of touch-ups, but not a lot, because the rest of the bodywork I just polished. So as we walk down to show you the engine, once I painted these handrails, I just fitted some silicon tube cut some sections just stops the brand new paint not getting chafed up by the fender ropes okay let's step onto the back of pipistrel and show you the engine bay right let's hope i don't fall so here we have a three cylinder nanny 21 horsepower diesel engine nice and quiet once the boards are on Nice and economical. I've cruised about 45 hours over the summertime, and I think I've used probably not even quite a third of a tank of diesel, and it's a 75 gallon tank. It's really economical, really quiet, fantastic little engine. On the top there, you'll see some water hoses. So it takes water from the engine, heats up into the calorifier, and also that is 240 volt powered as well. Online, shoreline, it's about an hour. Cruising is about an hour and a half and we've got enough water for two showers at the end of the day. Okay, here is the battery bank. There is a nearly new 95 amp hour starter battery on the left and these batteries are virtually brand new I bought these from Halfords. They are 100 amp hour, 225 cycles, 
the the battery code is HLB750 and they were about £125 each they had a good rating on their website so as far as I was concerned that seems pretty good connected to the batteries on the earth side is a Victron smart shunt that gives data drawn from the battery onto a app on your phone or your tablet and it's really good for seeing the state of your batteries what you've got left what you've used how many days at the current use I think that's really good that with the smart solar charger and um, monitor I think it's at 7515 and they both are linked together and all the data is available on their app okay let's go back to when we got the boat eight months ago we had a survey done and the survey had picked up that the there was about one inch one inch sorry one millimeter movement in the drive shaft so I wasn't happy with that I said let's get her in the dry dock and we'll have a new cutlass bearing little did I know that the engineer was searching high and low and could not get a 50 25 120 cutlass bearing they weren't available anymore sea otter must have made their own and yeah they ceased to trade a few years ago so the only option I had was to increase the inside diameter of the cutlass bearing and go with a bigger drive shaft so it was quite a lot of money but once that was fitted I said let's put a new PSS dripless seal uh, well I had to anyway I was going to even if I could get a normal cutlass bearing but because I had to upgrade there was no choice anyway and these are fantastic you don't have to pump grease you don't have to do nothing and I've had absolute faultless performance in the 40 odd hours that we've been cruising when they fit them brand new sometimes they're known to screech a little bit you just pull the bellow back let a tiny little bit of water wash the surface and um, and they, they quieten down but I've not had a problem at all so there's a stainless steel ring a graphite section that's fitted to the bellows the stainless steel spins on the shiny surface of the graphite and that's the seal I've not had a single problem absolutely fantastic so looking to the port side under here is a sterling 40 amp battery charger so often during the night time that will go on but in the daytime as soon as the sun is out the battery gets turned off I disconnect the shoreline and the solar I use the solar it's free energy might as well use that let's let's just quickly show you a product that I've started to use this is no way a, a, um, a paid promotion or nothing but I used these on motorbikes many years ago ACF 50 is an anti-corrosion formula mainly for aluminium absolutely fantastic I used it on motorbikes to protect them when you're riding in the winter and they missed it through wings and fuselage sections on light aircraft and it gives protection on areas that you can't reach I've used it on the bow section the gas locker I've yet to use it in here as I say it's just something that I really really recommend and it's certainly not paid whatsoever it's just fantastic that's the PSS dripless seal now what I want to quickly show you as we're towards the, the rear of the boat let's prop open this little cover is the bilge the bilge section on a sea otter because they use water ballast and not bricks like traditional boats they have such a tiny little bilge area so there's three areas to check your bilge one in the wet room one in the bow section on the port side and then slightly starboard side underneath the back step so you move this little cover and there is a one inch depth in what would be considered the bilge it's totally dry that is it how weird is that so they use one inch section as part of the, the the flooring of the boat for rigidity and in between 
those sections there's bits of wood and obviously they fit the floor to that wood so not that you need to do any work on the floor but if you do you certainly don't want to go much further than an inch because you'll be drilling into the base of the boat <clears throat> and they use water so you don't want water coming through and sinking your boat so thank you very much for coming along again i hope to do other videos of different things so if there's anything particular that you'd like me to mention or show you then please leave a message otherwise more vlogs will follow soon take care bye for now